Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory is a federal research facility in Livermore, California, founded by the University of California in 1952, a federally funded research and development center. It is primarily funded by the United States Department of Energy and managed and operated by Lawrence Livermore National Security, LLC a partnership of the University of California, Bechtel, Babcock and Wilcox, URS, and Battle Memorial Institute in affiliation with the Texas A&M University System. The laboratory was honored in 2012 by having the synthetic chemical element Livermorium named after it. Background LLNL is self-described as a premier research and development institution for science and technology applied to national security. Its principal responsibility is ensuring the safety, security and reliability of the nation's nuclear weapons through the application of advanced science, engineering and technology. The laboratory also applies its special expertise and multidisciplinary capabilities to preventing the proliferation and use of weapons of mass destruction, bolstering homeland security and solving other nationally important problems, including energy and environmental security, basic science and economic competitiveness. LLNL is home to many unique facilities and a number of the most powerful computer systems in the world, according to the TOP500 list, including Blue Gene L, the world's fastest computer from 2004 until Los Alamos National Laboratory's IBM Roadrunner supercomputer surpassed it in 2008. On June 18, 2012, LLNL retook the lead on the latest edition of the list of the world's top 500 supercomputers with IBM Sequoia, a 16.32 petaflops system packing more than 1.5 million custom power cores. It is based on the same IBM Blue Gene Q architecture used in three other top 10 systems which also were the most power efficient on the list. Since 1978, LLNL has received a total of 118 R&D 100 awards, including five in 2007. The awards are given annually by the editors of R&D magazine to the most innovative ideas of the year. The laboratory is located on a one-square-mile site at the eastern edge of Livermore. It also operates a 7,000 acres remote experimental test site called Site 300, situated about 15 miles southeast of the main lab site. LLNL has an annual budget of about $1.5 billion and a staff of roughly 5,800 employees. Origins LLNL was established 64 years ago in 1952 as the University of California Radiation Laboratory at Livermore, an offshoot of the existing UC Radiation Laboratory at Berkeley. It was intended to spur innovation and provide competition to the Nuclear Weapon Design Laboratory at Los Alamos in New Mexico, home of the Manhattan Project that developed the first atomic weapons. Edward Teller and Ernest Lawrence, director of the Radiation Laboratory at Berkeley, are regarded as the co-founders of the Livermore facility. The new laboratory was sited at a former naval air station of World War II. It was already home to several UC radiation laboratory projects that were too large for its location in the hills above the Berkeley campus including one of the first experiments in the magnetic approach to confined thermonuclear reactions. About half an hour southeast of Berkeley, the Livermore site provided much greater security for classified projects than an urban university campus. Lawrence tapped 32-year-old Herbert York, a former graduate student of his, to run Livermore. Under York, the lab had four main programs. Project Sherwood, Project Whitney, Diagnostic Weapon Experiments, and a Basic Physics Program. York and the new lab embraced the Lawrence Big Science approach, tackling challenging projects with physicists, chemists, engineers, and computational scientists working together in multidisciplinary teams. Lawrence died in August 1958 and shortly after, the university's board of regents named both laboratories for him, as the Lawrence Radiation Laboratory. 
Historically, the Berkeley and Livermore laboratories have had very close relationships on research projects, business operations and staff. The Livermore Lab was established initially as a branch of the Berkeley Laboratory. The Livermore Lab was not officially severed administratively from the Berkeley Lab until 1971. To this day, in official planning documents and records, Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory is designated as Site 100, Lawrence Livermore National Lab is Site 200, and LLNL's remote test location as Site 300. The laboratory was renamed Lawrence Livermore Laboratory in 1971. On October 1, 2007 LLNS assumed management of LLNL from the University of California, which had exclusively managed and operated the laboratory since its inception 55 years before. The laboratory was honored in 2012 by having the synthetic chemical element Livermorium named after it. The LLNS takeover of the laboratory has been controversial. In May 2013, an Alameda County jury awarded over $2.7 million to five former laboratory employees who were among 430 employees LLNS laid off during 2008. The jury found that LLNS breached a contractual obligation to terminate the employees only for reasonable cause. The five plaintiffs also have pending age discrimination claims against LLNS, which will be heard by a different jury in a separate trial. There are 125 COP plaintiffs awaiting trial on similar claims against LLNS. The May 2008 layoff was the first layoff at the laboratory in nearly 40 years. On March 14, 2011, the city of Livermore officially expanded the city's boundaries to annex LLNL and move it within the city limits. The unanimous vote by the Livermore City Council expanded Livermore's southeastern boundaries to cover 15 land parcels covering 1,057 acres that comprise the LLNL site. Prior to this, the site was in an unincorporated area of Alameda County. The LLNL campus continues to be owned by the federal government. Nuclear Weapons Projects From its inception, Livermore focused on innovative weapon design concepts. As a result, its first three nuclear tests were unsuccessful. The lab persevered and its subsequent designs proved increasingly successful. In 1957, the Livermore Lab was selected to develop the warhead for the Navy's Polaris missile. This warhead required numerous innovations to fit a nuclear warhead into the relatively small confines of the missile nose coon. During the Cold War, scores of Livermore-designed warheads entered service. These were used in missiles ranging in size from the Lance surface-to-surface -surface tactical missile to the Megaton-class Spartan anti-ballistic missile. Over the years, LLNL designed the following warheads. W-27, W-38, B-41, W-45, W-47, W-48, W-55, W-56, W-58, W-62, W-68, W-70, W-71, W-79, W-82, B-83, and W-87. The W87 and the B83 are the only LLNL designs still in the US. Nuclear stockpile. With the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991 and the end of the Cold War, the United States began a moratorium on nuclear testing and development of new nuclear weapon designs to sustain existing warheads for the indefinite future. A science-based stockpile stewardship program was defined that emphasized the development and application of greatly improved technical capabilities to assess the safety, security, and reliability of existing nuclear warheads without the use of nuclear testing. Confidence in the performance of weapons, without nuclear testing, is maintained through an ongoing process of stockpile surveillance assessment and certification, and refurbishment or weapon replacement. With no new designs of nuclear weapons, the warheads in the U.S. stockpile must continue to function far past their original expected lifetimes. As components and materials age, problems can arise. 
stockpile life extension programs can extend system lifetimes, but they also can introduce performance uncertainties and require maintenance of outdated technologies and materials, because there is concern that it will become increasingly difficult to maintain high confidence in the current warheads for the long term. The Department of Energy, National Nuclear Security Administration initiated the Reliable Replacement Warhead Program. Our RW designs could reduce uncertainties, ease maintenance demands, and enhance safety and security. In March 2007, the LLNL design was chosen for the Reliable Replacement Warhead. Since that time, Congress has not allocated funding for any further development of the RW. The Livermore Action Group organized many mass protests, from 1981 to 1984, against nuclear weapons which were being produced by the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. Peace activists Ken Nightingale and Aldred Schneider were involved. On June 22, 1982, more than 1,300 anti-nuclear protesters were arrested in a non-violent demonstration. More recently, there has been an annual protest against nuclear weapons research at Lawrence Livermore. In August 2003, 1,000 people protested at Livermore Labs against new generation nuclear warheads. In the 2007 protest, 64 people were arrested. More than 80 people were arrested in March 2008 while protesting at the gates. 31 people were arrested in August 2013 during a protest marking the 68th anniversary of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, including famous whistleblower and author of the Pentagon Papers, Daniel Ellsberg, in the 1980s. Lawrence's widow petitioned the regents of the University of California on several occasions to remove her husband's name from the Livermore Laboratory. Due to its focus on nuclear weapons, she outlived her husband by more than 44 years and died in Walnut Creek at the age of 92 in January 2003. Plutonium Research LLNL conducts research into the properties and behavior of plutonium to learn how plutonium performs as it ages and how it behaves under high pressure. Plutonium has seven temperature-dependent solid allotropes. Each possesses a different density and crystal structure. Alloys of plutonium are even more complex. Multiple phases can be present in a sample at any given time. Experiments are being conducted at LLNL and elsewhere to measure the structural, electrical and chemical properties of plutonium and its alloys and to determine how these materials change over time. Such measurements will enable scientists to better model and predict plutonium's long-term behavior in the aging stockpile. The lab's plutonium research is conducted in a specially designed, ultra-safe, and highly secure facility called the Superblock. Work with highly enriched uranium is also conducted here. In March 2008, the National Nuclear Security Administration presented its preferred alternative for the transformation of the nation's nuclear weapons complex. Under this plan, LLNL would be a center of excellence for nuclear design and engineering, a center of excellence for high explosive research and development, and a science magnet in high energy density physics. In addition, most of its special nuclear material would be removed and consolidated at a more central, yet-to-be-named site. On September 30, 2009, the NNSA announced that about two-thirds of the special nuclear material at LLNL requiring the highest level of security protection had been removed from LLNL. The move was part of NNSA's efforts initiated in October 2006 to consolidate special nuclear material at five sites by 2012, with significantly reduced square footage at those sites by 2017. The federally mandated project intends to improve security and reduce security costs and is part of NNSA's overall effort to transform the Cold War era nuclear weapons enterprise into a 21st century nuclear security enterprise.
The original date to remove all high-security nuclear material from LLNL, based on equipment capability and capacity, was 2014. NNSA and LLNL developed a timeline to remove this material as early as possible, accelerating the target completion date to 2012. Global Security Program The lab's work in global security aims to reduce and mitigate the dangers posed by the spread or use of weapons of mass destruction and by threats to energy and environmental security. Livermore has been working on global security and homeland security for decades predating both the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991 and the September 11, 2001, terrorist attacks. LLNL staff have been heavily involved in the cooperative non-proliferation programs with Russia to secure at-risk weapons materials and assist former weapons workers in developing peaceful applications and self-sustaining job opportunities for their expertise and technologies. In the mid-1990s, lab scientists began efforts to devise improved biodetection capabilities leading to miniaturized and autonomous instruments that can detect bio-threat agents in a few minutes instead of the days to weeks previously required for DNA analysis. Today, Livermore researchers address the full spectrum of threats, radiological, nuclear, chemical, biological, explosives, and cyber. They combine physical and life sciences, engineering, computations, and analysis to develop technologies that solve real-world problems. Activities are grouped into five programs. Non-proliferation, preventing the spread of materials technology and expertise related to weapons of mass destruction and detecting WMD proliferation activities worldwide, domestic security, anticipating, innovating and delivering technological solutions to prevent and mitigate devastating high leverage attacks on U.S. soil, defense, developing and demonstrating new concepts and capabilities to help the Department of Defense prevent and deter harm to the nation, its citizens and its military forces. Intelligence Working at the intersection of science, technology and analysis to provide insight into the threats to national security posed by foreign entities, energy and environmental security. Furnishing scientific understanding and technological expertise to devise energy and environmental solutions at global, regional and local scales. Other programs, LLNL supports capabilities in a broad range of scientific and technical disciplines applying current capabilities to existing programs and developing new science and technologies to meet future national needs. The LLNL Chemistry, Materials, and Life Science Research focuses on chemical engineering, nuclear chemistry, material science, and biology and bio-nanotechnology. Physics thrust areas include condensed matter and high-pressure physics, optical science and high-energy density physics, medical physics and biophysics, and nuclear, particle and accelerator physics. In the area of energy and environmental science, Livermore's emphasis is on carbon and climate, energy, water and the environment, and the National Nuclear Waste Repository. The LLNL engineering activities include micro and nanotechnology, lasers and optics, biotechnology, precision engineering, non-destructive characterization, modeling and simulation, systems and decision science, and senses, imaging and communications. The LLNL is very strong in computer science, with thrust areas in computing applications and research, integrated computing and communications systems, and cybersecurity. Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory has worked out several energy technologies in the field of coal gasification, shale oil extraction, geothermal energy, advanced battery research, solar energy, and fusion energy. Main oil shale processing technologies worked out by the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory or LLNL hours, LLNL rise and LLNL radio frequency technologies. Key accomplishments 
Over its 60-year history, Lawrence Livermore has made many scientific and technological achievements, including critical contributions to the U.S. nuclear deterrence effort through the design of nuclear weapons to meet military requirements and, since the mid-1990s, through the stockpile stewardship program by which the safety and reliability of the enduring stockpile is ensured without underground nuclear testing, design, construction, and operation of a series of ever larger, more powerful, and more capable laser systems, culminating in the 192-beam National Ignition Facility, completed in 2009. Advances in particle accelerator and fusion technology, including magnetic fusion, free electron lasers, accelerator mass spectrometry, and inertial confinement fusion. Breakthroughs in high-performance computing, including the development of novel concepts for massively parallel computing and the design and application of computers that can carry out hundreds of trillions of operations per second. Development of technologies and systems for detecting nuclear, radiological, chemical, biological, and explosive threats to prevent and mitigate WMD proliferation and terrorism. Development of extreme ultraviolet lithography for fabricating next-generation computer chips. First ever detection of massive compact halo objects, a suspected but previously undetected component of dark matter. Advances in genomics, biotechnology, and biodetection, including major contributions to the complete sequencing of the human genome though the Joint Genome Institute and the development of rapid PCR, technology that lies at the heart of today's most advanced DNA detection instruments. Development and operation of the National Atmospheric Release Advisory Center, which provides real-time, multi-scale modeling of hazardous materials released into the atmosphere. Development of highest resolution global climate models and contributions to the International Panel on Climate Change which, together with former Vice President Al Gore, was awarded the 2007 Nobel Peace Prize. Co-discoveries of new super-heavy elements 113, 114, 115, 116, 117, and 118. Invention of new healthcare technologies, including a microelectrode array for construction of an artificial retina, a miniature glucose sensor for the treatment of diabetes, and a compact proton therapy system for radiation therapy. On July 17, 2009 LLNL announced that the laboratory had captured eight R&D 100 awards, more than it had ever received in the annual competition. The previous LLNL record of seven awards was reached five times, in 1987, 1988, 1997, 1998 and 2006 also known as the Oscars of Invention. The awards are given each year for the development of cutting-edge scientific and engineering technologies with commercial potential. The awards raises LLNL's total to 129 since 1978. The winning technologies were Gemini Spectrometer, Artificial Retina, Restoring Sight to the Blind, the Rose Compiler Framework, the Babel Middleware, the Femtoscope, a time microscope, ROSE, making compiler technology accessible to all programmers, landmine locator, eradicating the aftermath of war, laser beam centering and pointing system, spectral sentry, protecting high-intensity lasers from bandwidth-related damage, precision robotic assembly machine, for building nuclear fusion ignition targets,